And welcome back to part two of our Ranger full Bitter Black Isle no hit run. Uh, going over our gear, it's same. this is actually the same clip as in the first one. Uh, key important things, rusted longbow, golden bardishes, heaven's keys for holy damage, dragon's glaze for ice damage on the bow, uh, revenant whale, physical damage bow, uh, from a blades, physical damage daggers. Our armor's purely cosmetic. Uh, the gloves there have like a plus five strength bonus, I think. I don't remember. Um, barb nails for increased knockdown. Ranger's ring for increased deathly arrow to ranger arrow. And then ring of desiccation to avoid drench status. Skills. Uh, tenfold. Comet shot. Reaper arrow. Hundred kisses instant reset. Dazzle blasts on there. We never use it. It's just, uh, just in case things go really poorly, we can use it. Uh, abilities wise, nothing of interest, mostly just standard physical augments, stability so that wing flaps don't bother us, and then acuity so that we do a little bit of extra magic damage against ghosts and living armor. Kicking things off, Rotwood Depository. I can hear we have the Saurian configuration. That is the easiest configuration, so I'm pretty happy with that. The ghost configuration isn't that bad. What we do is we just sprint immediately uh, upon starting the room. We sprint not this way, but the way we are about to go, once I realize that the Elder Order doesn't spawn here. But we immediately enter the room and we sprint over here to this hall. What'll happen, the reason we do that is because the ghosts will chase us. The wraiths will chase us down the hall over here, and it gives us the opportunity to... Basically, they'll dash towards us, we just have to dodge them once, and then we jump up, hit them with Heaven's Keys a couple times. And then once we've hit them with Heaven's Keys a couple times, we will uh, roll away so that they can't grab onto us. And then we just repeat the process. We let them move away, we let them dash at us. Let me do it again. Here is the harder one, because here we have to like come forward, kill the vile eyes, get the wraith spawned again and then we retreat back into the room we just killed all those goblins in um, but it's still it's very easy very straightforward it's not very concerning here because we don't have that configuration we have the saurian we're just going to use reaper's arrow to kill the two of them once both of them are dead we'll move forward and we will shoot our goblin shamans to the left as well as the four skeleton sages spells that are scary ingles are scary and then if we're too close, the frasms are scary. Levens aren't scary because we have a very pleasant indicator to tell us, hey, that's what's coming. Um, frazzle is scary because it, I don't really know the range. There we weren't hit, which is nice, but I don't actually know the range we need. So that's why it's a little bit concerning. Here, I'm switching to the rusted bow as well as the Fremé blades. There's two reasons for that. The Fremé blades I'm going to need for the goblin shamans in the next area. Um, the rusted longbow I'm going to want for the Elder Ogre that I just attempted to have spawn in that room, but did not. <laughs> uh, because we didn't get that, I know there's like a 99% chance that the uh, Elder Ogre spawns in the next room, which is not where I want it because there's going to be casters as well as sorry. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter this room, immediately have it spawn, back away, and I'm going to retreat through this room. The Goblin Shamans should cast one set of spells at me. Once they cast their set of spells at me, I should be safe from all casts after that. So I should be able to fight this uh, Elder Ogre pretty freely over here. Unfortunately, well, unfortunately we hit the post there. But unfortunately, this is actually not a very good area to fight the Elder Ogre because we didn't have the ability to really get the drop on it um, at first because it faces at us immediately. And then we have like these really weird areas that we can play it very safe by just switching between being up here to down there, as I just did. It can't really get us, but like, we also don't have very good opportunities to deal a lot of damage on it, except for using tenfolds, which, as I've explained in the previous video, I don't particularly like using tenfold. It's a very expensive ability. Um, I much prefer using Reaper's Arrow, because it's one, more fun, and two, less expensive. Uh, 
but we just don't have very good windows to do so. Like, I barely got that one off. I missed, and it wasn't great. So, yeah. We'll do what we can with it. Um, eventually, you'll see. Now I can use a Reaper's Arrow because it's below four health bars. It'll yell at us first, so I can do that. Unfortunately, we missed again, so we're just going to ten-fold her down. Unfortunately, we're missing a lot because I thought its head would bob lower and I would be able to hit it in the face, which didn't happen. Here, I'll, you'll see I'm going to just completely retreat. I am out of stamina. I can't tenfold her down. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait out during this torpor. I want her to follow me, though, so I can continue to work with her. But now that we're up here... Uh, we'll wail on her. Now, fortunately, she's kind of in this weird spot where she can't reach us with anything. Because of that, she's just gonna pout and stand there. Um, usually, I can actually just kill her in the other room, but we missed too many tenfolds, and so we ran out of stamina. Um, this is not the method I typically will use. That was me demonstrating. We were talking about uh, the camera shake that happens when you are backed up against the wall during it. And I was explaining that it's part of the, uh, as I said in the previous video, it's part of the fact that the camera zooms in slightly whenever it hits the stage of the uh, Reaper Zero. Here I'm going to let my stamina pick up just a little bit. I want it to be fairly high so I can sprint a lot. But what we're going to do is we're going to run in. We're going to go into the cage on the right to kill the three goblin shamans. Then we're going to go to the cage on the other side, on the left, to kill the other three goblin shamans. Um, but they will start casting at us. If we're not fast, it's possible to get hit by a frazzle in the room we're in. And if we're really awkward and clumsy, it's possible to get hit by like 11 from the other side as well, if we're just not doing things well. Typically that doesn't happen. Oftentimes it's very close, honestly. But like, it's one of those areas where it's always a very close fight. Or not a very close fight, but it's always very close to hitting us, but we just never end up getting hit. So here you'll see I was a little bit patient for that follow-up hit. Um, the reason for that patience is because I didn't want to get hit by the lingering ice damage. This is a very close one. Okay. We seem pretty safe. Uh, the Goblin Shaman seem to have ceased casting, which is very nice for us. Uh, these guys don't cast anything other than their... Um, they can heal and they can cast their Spell Screen. Those are the only two abilities that they can cast as the Saurian Sages. So we're pretty happy to engage with those guys at range because they're never going to hit us from range. Usually we would just run into the other side and melee them, but the uh, we had such a hectic first part that we panicked. Um, we're going to wait for our stamina to build up here. While we do that, be sure to uh, check out my stream, like I said. Uh, we do stream these live uh, over at twitch.tv slash local brohe. I stream Monday through Friday. Uh, so be sure to check in. We do these runs. We're going to be starting a Strider character uh, literally tomorrow. Um, it is Saturday today, so on Monday. Uh, here we can have Garm in this room, so we want high stamina. We didn't get that, so we're pretty happy. Um, unfortunately, this configuration has Hellhounds, which is the less exciting <laughs> configure or the less safe configuration for this room. But frankly, neither configuration scares us very much. We missed that shot, which is unfortunate. If we got that shot before he enters uh, combat with us, we usually can deal like two thirds of its health, of its two health bars, maybe uh, three quarters of its health. That's not what happened, so that's unfortunate. We're gonna let our stamina build back up. We're gonna switch to Dragon's Glaze so that we can shoot the Hellhounds. 
but yeah um but be sure to check out our stream we have a we have a good time live monday through friday a lot of dragon's dogma um, if you have any questions i am excited to answer them i like i love talking about this game i love playing this game it's a very satisfying game for me very much looking forward to the sequel really just information about it because they haven't told us anything <laughs> There are five on us, I think. One, two, three. I don't know. I might have miscounted. There was more than three for sure. It's probably four. I don't actually remember. They're they're all very much right there, so you don't really need to count so much. Um, in the room down below us, there's going to be there's going to be leafworms here, so we're going to run past and then shoot behind us. But in the room beyond us, uh, in the big open space. There's going to be three corrupt pawns, one Strigoi, and like four Hellhounds again, something like that. Um, the order of business that we have is we want to kill the Hellhounds first, because Hellhounds will come into this room on a whim pretty consistently. After that, our hope is to kill the Strigoi. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we kill some of the corrupted pawns first because they will walk into our line of sight. But for the most part, we want to kill the hellhounds. That's one. That's two. I don't remember how many there are. The music hasn't kicked in, which tells us that we're probably not in combat with much. Three, four... And we killed one pawn. I believe that's it for the uh, Hellhounds. Pretty sure there's only four. Next we switch to Revenant Whale. It just deals more damage to the pawns as well as to the Strigoi. There's no reason to keep Ice active. We keep Ice active for the Hellhounds because they are weaker to that. That's two pawns down. That's actually very good. The pawns are Sorcerer pawns. They can cast... Hello! That guy was interesting. They can cast uh, Sizem. They can cast Maelstrom. Neither of which we want. You can hear that guy just using his basic attack on us. Obviously, it's hitting the wall. But... Nerve-wracking, for sure. Strigoi down. That's very good. Usually, the Strigoi will make it in the room before I kill it, because it's kind of hard to shoot it. That is a Sizem. Now I can hear him shooting at us. What I'm probably gonna do is wait until his attacks are done, and then, oh, now he's channeling something. Let's just murder him. That's all three. We're gonna leave these guys by themselves. They are not in combat with us. It's just a really slow fight. It doesn't really give us any value either. Next, we're gonna have some leap worms. I want to say there are eight. If you are slow and like very deliberate with your steps, you can have them all spawn in one at a time, which is what I typically do. Uh, I was not thinking about it this time, so you see we have to roll past them and then shoot them as they come around. That's five, I think. It's possible we got a twofer with the arrow. It certainly does happen. This is a much more tense way to kill them because the last like two or three that are going to be around this corner are probably going to leap at me, but before I can see them. And it's nerve-wracking. Because if one leaps at me before I can see it like that, and I'm not quick enough with my reaction time, they hit me. That time we were quick enough, we got all three. That's eight total. We're safe. Now this room, uh, Bloodless Stockades. You'll see that I will go on the left side. I do this for every vocation, regardless of which vocation it is. On the left side of the cages, there's going to be spiders. On the right, if we go through the cages, we have leapworms. The leapworms spawn in from the ceiling and drop down. They don't spawn in until you are close. And then they sometimes disappear and then reappear and come back. And 
it's just all kinds of shenanigans for my game. So I generally will just avoid them by going around on this side. Here I'm waiting for the spider to shoot once more so that I can time my jump. I don't want to jump over there and then have him be shooting at me and catch like the web in the face. Super awkward. Here we prep a tenfold just in case we have the uh, just in case we have the white because I want to kill the white before it floats to the ceiling for two reasons. One, if he floats to the ceiling, he will summon uh, a bunch of undead, which we don't want. Typically, is what he'll do rather. Uh, and then if he close to the ceiling, a lot of times he comes in vulnerable because he's too far into the ceiling. I don't want either thing. Here I was shooting the ogres, not because I want the, or not the ogres, the cyclops, not because I want them dead yet, but because I want our mage pawns to be occupied with healing them. If the mages are occupied with healing them, one, it tells me where they are because they have this big green indicator, right? Uh, but two, it, uh, will prevent them from using their basic attack bolt by shooting it at me, which is the only thing that can possibly hit us right now. And then it also uh, prevents them from casting other things at me. So it's, it's just a safer course of action, frankly. And then the Cyclops are so easy to kill that it doesn't really matter whether we work on them quickly or not, because, you know, like that one, we just shot with regular arrows and it still only took less than 10 seconds. Bats. So, this is actually a fun part uh, for me now. I have finally learned the location of all of these bats. There's one, there's a couple of them. You'll see I zoom in on a couple of them just to kind of show where they are. A lot of times you have to aim actually below where the bat's body is. For some of them you have to be further in the room. Like those two, if you're standing at the first place you can see them, you're actually not able to see them. They are still going to be... Uh, or sorry, you're not able to shoot them. They'll be like completely immune to you until you like step a little bit further into the room. That one, you can't aim right at it. You have to aim a little bit below it. Look at that sneaky guy. So sneaky, right? And that should be all of them. And they didn't fly at us. I am like, I didn't... It's... <laughs> It's one of those simple pleasures in life, right? But this is one of those things that makes me super happy because so many times I would shoot a number of bats, but then there'd be a few of them that I could just never see. And literally during these runs, we actually finally found them. And I was super excited about it. Uh, <laughs> again, it's one of those really simple kind of silly things, but oh man, oh, I'm, I'm really excited how clean that is. Because anything flying at us is really dangerous as a uh, ranger. Because we don't, again, as I said before, we don't really have very good means to deal with anything that's quick and moving towards us. The bats, we just have to swing at our daggers. And most of the time we hit them before they hit us. But, like, a lot of the times, you know, it's it's a very close thing, right? So it's, it's a little bit nerve-wracking in that regard. So I'm just happy we can kind of one-shot them like that, kill them before they're even active. You can actually get the angle to hit him in the face with the Reaper's Arrow there. It does cause a one-shot for whatever reason. I have had a hard time landing it the last few runs, but he is quite easy to kill regardless. So, yeah. Here, I'm going to back up. I want to kill the uh, Vialize, but I need to back up because if they... The corpse of the Gork Cyclops is still like a hitbox. It still is a thing. Um, when they cast Ingle, for example, or any spell, it goes through his corpse. Even if it's Ingle and it has a projectile, it goes through his corpse, but my arrows won't. So I always, you'll see I'll back up to make sure that he doesn't, uh, the Vialize can't shoot at me through the corpse, because if they do, 
again, there's nothing I can do. I just have to dodge. And if it's Ingle, it's actually a lot harder to dodge than I would like. Death can spawn here. Obviously, it did not. Um, so we're going to be moving on. Spario to Scant Mercy. This is a room that's... Uh, one of those rooms that's always a frustration for a, any vocation. In this case, we're actually pretty fortunate as Ranger. Um, double Fire Drake is by far the easier configuration. Because we can just shoot them once with our Revenant Whale and they fall to the ground. Double Frostworm is probably the next easiest just because of the way they oper excuse me, operate. Frostfire is probably the worst just because they both both dragons operate in different ways and it's hard to keep track of both of them quite so effectively. But what you'll see is I will torpor both dragons. I am upset that I landed a shot on the heart there. That is actually far from ideal. Normally I just want to torpor it and then I want to land a, a shot to the heart while I'm on the ground. That way it rears while I'm on the ground and I can just unload. Before, we would silence these guys, but if we get too close to the heart, it actually becomes very difficult to silence the dragon. There, we knock the dragon down to the ground because I know I'm fairly close to killing this one. And I wanted it to be on the ground uh, simply because if it's in the air, it can breathe fire at me. If I knock it down like that, it'll be staggered for what I thought would be long enough to kill it. It was technically a little bit too short of a time that it was on the ground, but fortunately it was good enough that we get the knockdown. Now that the Frost Drake is dead and we only have this one Fire Drake, or Frost Worm is dead and we only have this one Fire Drake, we actually have a very easy time with this fight. So as we did with the uh, Duskmoon Tower in the previous video, we can just shoot this guy and he'll fall over every single time. One shot to the heart, two shots to the face. Whichever one we end up doing, it doesn't really matter. It's going to take two arrows at max to knock him down. Normally, I would use Reaper's Arrow while it's in the air as well as on the ground just to speed this process up. Because my stamina is already only at half, I'm just going to Reaper's Arrow it while it's on the ground. We do more than enough damage. Very surprising we actually get a second knockdown there. That almost never happens. I'm not complaining, mind you, but that pretty much never happens. I don't really know how to make that happen more consistently. Um, but hey, I'm not complaining, right? Like, yeah, you see here I'm losing a Reaper's Arrow. It's only because it's pretty close to dead, so I'm like, you know, we can waste an extra one. Realistically, when we go into the next room, we'll probably uh, wait anyway, because we'll have to have the dragon set. Here, you'll see I go all the way around. The reason for that is if I walk straight out, the Cursed Dragon, if it does spawn into this room, which it usually won't until the body is completely decomposed, if it does, but uh, if it does spawn into this room, it lands right there, on, like right at the first entry point, if we walked around the corner there. And I don't want it to land on top of me because that's a hit, uh, and I don't want that. I see we have the uh, Eliminator configuration. This is the more annoying configuration. One, because there are eight Eliminators versus only three in, with the Living Armor configuration, whereas the number of Living Armors does not change determining the configuration. Um, but the bigger complaint is actually the Dragons. This configuration has two Grancis level Wyverns. The Living Armor configuration has a single Thunder Wyvern which is definitely stronger, but the Thunder Wyvern is pretty much the weakest Wyvern for us as a Ranger to fight. Uh, we are so good at dealing with it that it's not really a concern at all. But what's more is when the, there's the single Thunder Wyvern, it roosts inside the courtyard, uh, all the way in, in the middle of all the buildings. And so we kind of can just operate however we want, uh, because it will never see us until we get kind of close to it. Um, because the two regular Grancis Wyverns will spawn in, uh, or sorry, they roost on top of the buildings, it becomes harder for us to operate without them noticing if we actually want to kill the things in the room first. So we have to move over to them first and kill them, otherwise they'll just cast at us. The other thing about this room is that, uh, the two Thunder Wyverns will have 
a cursed dragon as the uh, carrion beast that can spawn, whereas the living armor configuration with the single thunder wyvern has death. Death, as you've seen a couple times in the previous video, not much of a concern for us. It only takes like three or four reaper arrows to get him to just leave us alone. So death is much more favorable here than the uh, cursed dragon just because of the way this room is set. There's very few places where safe spotting the breath is as consistent. We very rarely get hit by it, but it's just a bigger hassle. I'm sure we'll have it, because uh, we pretty much always get it with this room. Fortunately, these dragons are still very easy to deal with, but the fact that there are two of them just makes them frustrating. Obviously, that guy died instantly. Our problem now is that we can't really engage the other one without having some of the Eliminators notice us, which is going to mess up how we deal with them in the future and deal damage to them. So, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not what I like. I'll just put it that way. I don't really like this room configuration. It doesn't matter which vocation you're playing, this is always going to be pretty much the least favorable configuration. Um, simply just by sheer numbers. Uh, two dragons is worse than one, even though these are two weaker dragons, they're still worse than one. Uh, eight eliminators is worse than three. It's, it's just based off of the numbers, it's not... They're not equitable rooms. Especially when the enemy types that are in each configuration aren't all that different. So here we broke his horns. I don't like that fact. Uh, because he'll probably yell at us. So you'll see I'm really far away. Intentionally. I don't want him to yell at us because it does cast a debilitation. If it hits us, our character, even if we don't get debilitated, our character model will turn like blue or red or something. I don't know. I'm colorblind. My chat tells me that it's blue with like a red blink or something like that. I, I, I genuinely don't know. It, it just looks dark to me. Um, I see the blue, but then like it like blinks. I, I don't know what's going on. Um, I'm red, green, colorblind, if you're curious. Uh, not in an absolutely critical fashion. Just, just enough for it to be annoying. <laughs> But you can hear some of the Eliminators are stomping around. I don't like that. There are eight Eliminators. We have killed one thus far. We're going to backtrack and kill the first two over here. The reason we're backtracking instead of killing the ones that we can hear moving around is because I want them to stop moving around. I want them to leave their awareness of me so I can get preemption bonus damage on them when we do return. It's a minor thing because it's not like they can hit us at any place that we're going to stand anyway, but it is uh, faster if we get the preemption damage. If I remember correctly, this fight was pretty funny. Um, maybe funny is the wrong word, but we don't kill this one here, if I remember correctly. Uh, it lives with like just a little bit of health left. Yeah, but it moves out of a way we can hit it, so I'm like, well, crap. So I'm like, all right, let's deal with this guy, I guess. Um, here, I'm probably responding to chat. As I said before, we do stream these live, so we have nice conversation. Stop by. It's thoroughly enjoyable. And maybe you'll learn something from uh, the other people in chat as they correct me. <laughs> so unfortunately we lost preemption bonus damage and you can see how much damage the difference is, right? That was a huge difference. The eliminators can jump up here, so I am actually moving to this side so that I'm safe. And that's what's funny, that guy just spawns back in right next to us. On stream, if you had the audio of this from stream, I actually straight up yelp there. I panicked <laughs> because I was not expecting him to spawn next to me. And if he decided to swing his hammer, that would have been the end of this run. And we are about an hour and a half into this run. This is me, like, trying to calm down my heart rate 
uh, on stream because I was absolutely terrified. But yeah, um, scary. That was that was not what I wanted at all. <laughs> but yeah, it worked out. But yeah, that guy just teleports back to his starting position. Now we've killed three Eliminators. We still have five, because as I said before, there are eight. There are usually two at the bottom of this little stairs in this hallway. Uh, one on either side. There's one all the way down that hall usually, and then there's two more in the courtyard where the dragon would, would have roosted if it was the uh, other one, the Thunder Bedroom, which we didn't have. The two that are in the courtyard probably were the ones that were walking around. If not those two, it would have been the one that's at the end of this hall. I don't know which one was moving. It doesn't particularly matter. We'll find him regardless. So these guys will walk towards you. Pretty much consistently, unless you're in a place where they can't reach. In this case, this roof is a place they can't reach, so they kind of stop moving. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't give me a good angle to shoot the two that we were looking at before. So I will have to manipulate where I stand. <clears throat> But I know it'll give me like a safe spot to deal with these guys. Our lantern's gone out. Let's fix that. Yeah, see now that I'm up here, they can actually walk over to this spot. So you'll see that they all move. And I know that, and I jumped up here on purpose so that I could have this angle to hit people. I'm using tenfold there because I know I don't have preemption bonus damage anymore. Um, I also don't want them to go flying too far and out of a place where I could reach them. Here, now I know I can reach them even if he does go flying because the angle He'll probably just land next to that other one if he does. See? So, Reaper Zero's fine. I'm surprised that one did as much damage as it did, because we do have the music playing, which tells me about multi combat, which means I probably don't get preemption bonus damage, but... You know, you know, sometimes even if you do have that going, you're fine. You'll see we do something kind of similar with uh, the way we deal with the uh, living armor. In a bit. If we had the living armor configuration, we usually jump on the roofs immediately and we deal with the first living armor. And then we kill the dragon. And then we go back and we deal with the other two living armor. Before finishing with the three eliminators at the end. Kind of like how we did this time. We deal with the first one, and then we kill the dragons, and then we go back and deal with the eliminators. It's very similar. The reason we deal with that first one first is because we can... Uh, without dragging the ire very consistently, and it basically just limits the amount of backtracking we have to do by just a touch. There should only be one more, I want to say. Because we just killed four of them, right? So this should be the last eliminator. I want to say I lost, I wasn't counting before and so I'm, I get confused here and will wander for like a minute looking for the last Eliminator, but I that was the last one. The reason I was confused is because uh, I expected one in the hall that we killed and then two at the bottom of those stairs that kind of like towards where we're looking at with our screen. Um, and then there's usually two in the courtyard where we killed the last one. 
the problem as to why I lost track is because... Yeah, here I'm counting. With my bow. But yeah, uh... The reason I lost track is because the third one, which is at this, at the end of this hall, had walked forward and we had killed it with the other two, right? After we killed those, those two, we had one of them was, that was in this courtyard had walked through the hall. So we killed it at the end of this hall, which is where there's usually an eliminator normally, but it wasn't the same eliminator because that eliminator was already dead. So I thought this eliminator's corpse right there was the one that usually spawns around here. And I'm just like losing my mind a little bit. So you'll see we backtrack. I'm looking for the last eliminator. I don't find it. I'm like, I must have miscounted. And so we leave. Having watched this back, it's very obvious, though, to me, which ones we killed, which one we had left. Just one of those silly things. This is why I like to count out loud. Um, if you watch me on stream, you'll see that I count out loud when we kill... When I know there's a specific number of enemies we need to kill for something, I will count them out loud to make sure that we are hitting them uh, correctly in the right number of them. For instance, uh, when we kill, when we're in the Tower of Treasons Repaid, if we get the Strigoi configuration with the 13 succubi, I will count out all 13 succubi over the like five minutes it takes us to kill them. Because if I miss one, it's very easy for it to hit me, right? So here, we're going to stop right there. Next hit is going to break his armor. If I Reaper's Arrow, which is my highest damaging ability, we get to shear off a lot more armor, or a lot more health bars than we would uh, with a physical weapon than we would, uh, than we're supposed to. <clears throat> if we had Gamble on the bar instead of Comet Shot, we could have used Gamble and it would do even more health bars. It's like, it takes out like a whole extra health bar in change, I want to say. Um, it leaves just a little bit more damage with our current uh, configuration. If I had more stamina, it might do more, because Gamble is calculated with stamina, not <clears throat> with uh, strength. However, parry apps do work. Uh, we did test, and we found out that I think two parry apps killed it with Gamble, with what I'm at. Or I think it was four parry apps killed... Uh, it with Reaper's Arrow <clears throat> from that position specifically. I think on this one I forget. I'm not paying attention to the health, and so you'll see what happens and how different the fight is if I don't measure that Reaper's Arrow shot out and I just break it. We have to use way more tenfold flurries, which doesn't really matter because we don't have to do that much extra. Um, and we have this long period. Oh, nope, okay, I did measure it correctly. Nice. We have this long period where we do have to just shoot it with regular arrows to take it down. So, like, we do recover that stamina. Here you'll see I move to the other rooftop. This is to give me a better vantage so that I can actually hit his head. Because no matter where I shoot him from, he's going to turn to face us with his shield. But from up above him, I get to hit his head with far more arrows than uh, otherwise. And... It, it, it just makes it much more damage per tenfold. And tenfold is a very stamina intensive ability, as I've said multiple times. So it's just a little bit better for us. We're actually at a slightly unfortunate range from him. Uh, if he was a little bit closer, we'd be doing considerably more damage. But and that's okay. Yeah, see how little stamina we have now? If I hadn't used that Reaper's Arrow, we probably would have ran out. We'd have had to wait and shoot, like, single arrows with Dragon's Blaze to make up for it. That's not fun. 
But again, fortunately, because we do have this period where we have to, we just shoot at it with regular arrows, we do recover the majority of our stamina just as a factor of how much time we're here and not using it. And once again, we'll swap for Dragon's Blaze. We might have the same situation as last time where we don't have the right angle, but we'll see. Yeah. Unfortunate angle, so we don't get very good damage here. Um, normally, when we shoot him, it'll do like about, I don't know, I'd say maybe a quarter of a health bar per shot. Maybe a little less, maybe 20%. Um... But, again, we don't have that happening because we just, we have, he's a little too far from us, so we're not shooting over the shield as well as I would like. But it's still perfectly fine. If we wanted, we could go down there and use daggers to kill him with the Heaven's Keys. Uh... The reason we use Heaven Keys instead of Dragon's Glaze on Ghosts, but not on, uh, but not on the Living Armor is because the Wraiths are weak to Holy. They aren't weak to other magic damage types. The Living Armors are just weak to magic in their second phase. They aren't weak to any specific element. So, it doesn't really matter whether we use Dragon's Glaze or Heaven's Keys. Heaven's Keys are a lot safer. Oh, sorry, not Heaven's Keys. Uh, Dragon's Glaze is much safer because we can do it from range, and the uh, Living Armor isn't going to move, attack us, any of that. So here we're going to let our Stamina build before fighting Damon, um, at least somewhat. Damon fight, you saw we switched to the Rusted Bow. We're going to Torpor him. Damon phase one's a lot scarier for me than phase two. What we're going to attempt to do is Torpor him, and then hopefully we'll climb on his face and use tenfold, or not tenfold, to use 100 kisses. If I had a 1,000 kisses ring, I'd put that on. I don't have one. It's not really necessary either. It would just like kind of really make phase one absolute cheese. This is the only place we use 100 kisses anyway, so it's not really a big deal. Um, but we'll hop on his face, hopefully get 100 kisses to push him into the uh, Soul Vortex. Once he's Soul Vortexing, we'll, or about to Soul Vortex, we'll get out of the way. We'll line up sight the Stamina Drain, because that counts as a hit. Uh, and then we'll use Reaper's Arrow on him to bring him down. If not, we'll get him low, and if we don't kill him during that phase, we'll just torpor him again, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll either shoot him or climb back on, depending. Phase two is exclusively bow, though. I am not a good ranger. That was a very close uh, ice. I, I like to run underneath him for that attack. Uh, because it's much more consistent to dodge. And when he's torpored, I have a very hard time just actually dodging it. Of course, he uses that move to start immolate. We probably could have gotten a stagger off before the actual immolate finished. Um, because we're not using Reaper's Arrow right now, I want the stagger value of having the... Uh, I want the stagger value of having double barb nails. Man, feels bad. Uh, it's just going to make things a little bit safer for me because double barb nails, more stagger, obviously. Um, and here, if he gets staggered, 
I'm quite safe from a lot of attacks because he doesn't get to do a lot because he'll be, you know, staggered. And because he's Torpor here, a lot of those attacks will uh, be slow enough that I'm guaranteed to get the stagger off. Here, I'm going to switch to Revenant Whale just because he's not being nice. He's not using the abilities I want him to. Casting is not what we want him to do. We want him to use, like, his punches and things like that so that he can lower his head like that because it gives us access to the face like this. Double barb nails coming in right there with the stagger. We should get one more, I would expect. Nope, we just jump off. Because he's below, when he gets below two and a half health bars missing, he has the opportunity to use Soul Vortex. When he is at three health bars missing, he will use Soul Vortex next. Whether he does one ability first and then Soul Vortex, or he just does Soul Vortex immediately, is based off of like what you're doing to him and what position he's in. But he will do Soul Vortex next. Um, he will generally move to the center to use Soul Vortex because there he did an attack that moved him. He'll just use Soul Vortex immediately. There I just realized that I don't have my Reaper Zero equipped anymore. That's a bit of a mistake. That's why we also didn't get the timing on Deathly. I was expecting there to be a third charge and then when I realized it didn't. Whoops. But that's okay. We're just gonna Reaper Zero him now. We do plenty of damage. We're plenty far away as well, so if we don't stagger him or knock him down during this motion, uh, the yell that he does when he opens up isn't going to hit us, which is what I care about. I don't want to get caught by that. Here, I'm going to wait. Uh, the reason I'm waiting is because I do want higher stamina for the next uh, phase. So I'm just going to wait until he starts standing up, and then we'll shoot him once. Let me have maximum stamina, no risk. And then we'll push to phase two. Awaken Damon. Other than having a really cool quote here, uh, Awaken Damon is uh, a little bit easier in my opinion. Um, he's less squirrely with his motions, is really what it is. The fa fast motions and quick casts of like ice that he has in phase one is really what's dangerous to me. Uh, especially since I'm not very good at climbing. <laughs> uh, phase two, he doesn't, he's much more slow and deliberate. So even though his attacks are much more dangerous, I find them much easier to deal with. And we're just going to Reaper Arrow him. Obviously, we'll cut it short a couple times because, you know, uh, we don't want to get hit by things. We're going to play it safe. But we're just going to use Reaper, Dire, or Deathly, whichever one we have time to charge. As you see, a Reaper Zero just did about, well, I don't know, maybe like 60% is out there, maybe 50. A little bit far. I want to be slightly closer because while the longbow has a further range than the shortbow, it's not that long, really. That move, the breath that he does, he always picks a side. So if you stand right in front of him like I did, you're safe because he's going to turn away from you first. If you try, like, picking a side before he's chosen, he might turn to the side that you're running to, and then you just get hit by it. Just stand in front of him, wait till he turns, and then just go the other way. It's very consistent, very safe. You should pretty much never get hit by that unless you're standing still being silly. So here, I'm going to push him, like, he's just under two and a half health bars, so he can use Soul Vortex, but he's not necessarily going to yet. Because I know he can, I'm just going to shoot him with regular arrows, because I want maximum stamina for when he does the Soul Vortex, that way I can hit him with uh, as many Reaper's arrows as possible when he's in his most vulnerable spot. Here, I'm trying to put the rubble between us. But he's being a bit of a nincompoop by moving around a bunch. Makes it a little harder. This is a great position, though, because I am looking right at his head. The reason that's a good position is because it gives us the best opportunity to get a stagger off. Not here, because here I don't really care about the stagger. But the next one. His defensive curl after the Reaper's Arrow is where I want to actually stagger him. Because if I get a stagger here during this defensive curl, 
we get extra time to get even more Reaper arrows in. Unfortunately, we don't have crazy high stamina at the moment, so we're probably not going to get as much damage as I would like, even if we do get that knockdown. But it's still a much better position. The reason I want that in this or this phase is because when he gets up in awakened form, he is much uh, quicker and much more eager to cast things like Sizem at me. And we do get the stagger. Uh, but yeah, he's much more eager to cast things like Sizem at me. And Sizem, if I'm standing on the ground when he casts it, uh, I get staggered and that counts as a hit. So I have to jump into the air to avoid it. And again, we don't want that. So, we're just going to do this. Alright, there I can't cast anymore, so I'm going to have to actually just evade him. That's a bolide, unfortunately. I could have just been shooting at him the whole time. So, I want to say here we actually get a little bit dangerous, because he casts, like, Sizem three times. So, bolide into Sizem, which is not a great combination. That was very close. Here's another Sizem. Again, I'm in the air, so I don't get the jelly legs. I don't get staggered. Stability augment does not help us against Sizem. Here is a bad spot, because like, he starts casting something, and I can't see what it is. It's Bola. And I'm like, I need this guy to move. He's casting again. Casting again. That was almost a mistake. We hit that column, and we almost got staggered for it, but fortunately we just bounce off and we keep going. And this is why phase two is dangerous, but like still, e even though we almost had that hit there, it's still much safer than like the ice spikes and things like that from phase one, right? The ice spikes in phase one are just very dangerous. Here we just use a dire arrow because I know it does enough damage to get the last bit of health in. So we don't need to worry about charging it the whole way. If we shoot it off before the bolide even lands, like, it goes away. So, there we go! Success. This was an exhausting run. Uh, it takes about two hours, a little less. It's like 150 or something like that. Um, it was about two hours each attempt, and it was... Really exhausting. It took us like 36, 38 attempts. Uh, we got really lucky this run, but this was a very clean run, actually. There were very few moments where things got really dicey. Uh, and most of them were like really odd things, like that Eliminator spawning back in, things like that. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, starting next week, we'll be leveling up a Strider. It's going to be Strider 200 levels, so that we can do the same runs. But uh, I hope to see you guys there. You guys be sure to check out my stream over at twitch.tv slash localticobrohe. We stream Monday through Friday uh, during the day. I start at 10.30 Eastern time. And I hope to see you there. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Cheers, everybody.